Hello, hello, it's Scott Jonasson from Red Lake, Ontario, Canada, hauling fuel in the Great White North. You're watching Trucker Josh on YouTube. <laughs> filming this on a Friday and it's very evident that it's a Friday in Wisconsin in July. As far as I can see behind me in my mirrors, bumper to bumper, as far as I can see in front of me here. They're a little spread out in front of me because I'm trying to leave this gap between me and this SUV in front of me who hasn't quite discovered the cruise control that God has given us yet, but that's okay. It's okay, patience is a virtue. He's, he's given her now, but uh, it's been fluctuating between like 55 miles an hour and 70. That's okay, we're doing fine now. What, I, what I'd like to say though is good morning. Good morning. And I am sorry, Wisconsin. It must be so frustrating to live along this corridor here of the I-94 and have your area and your highways and streets completely overrun every weekend by cottage goers from, from everywhere. And then you got me coming through here yet, plugging up the road. I'm sorry. I was I'm just trying to bring some freight up to Canada, eh? Somebody bought some stuff, I gotta bring it to them, eh? All these people just lined up. Oh, this guy's slowing down again. Oh, he's got a truck in front of him. I'm slowing him down this time. There should not be this much traffic in Wisconsin. Oh, look at this, a break in traffic. I can get around this guy, finally. Finally, <laughs> I win. Stay there. Stay, don't cut in front of me yet, you little SUV. I know you want to, Mr. Subaru. Cruise control, it's a beautiful thing. I guarantee you, your fancy Subaru has it. Cruise, cruise control. Not that it's his fault this time. This time is this guy who's going a little slower. This guy's got BC plates. I bet you I know where he's from. It says Surrey, BC on the side. Whoa, I was not expecting that. That was a white guy from Surrey, BC. He's gotta be like the last one. Good for him, good for him. So I'm high on caffeine right now. Just had a coffee, I'm feeling great. Still about, uh, I'd say 10, 11 hours from home. We're trying to give her as much as we can. Uh, we're getting really good fuel economy today. I've got only 2,000 pounds on my flatbed behind me. And we're taking this up to the border, almost to the border with Northwest Territories in Northern Alberta, to a town called High Level. Because it's at a high level on the map. Well, at the rest area, it's time for our uh, load check to make sure that everything's still good and that the load is still there. Yep, still there. Let's go. I'm just kidding. We're going to get out and look at it. Make sure everything's still good. Yeah, I'm really worried about that corner up there. There is rug underneath it, but it's such a sharp point. Yeah, I don't want that to rip through my tarp. Might have to put another rug in there. Get a little bit more padding. Because the wind is coming in here and it's just pounding on it, eh? Everything's still here. Everything's still looking good. Looking good back here. A really odd load like it, it's it was very unique it's weird I undid the tarps there and got my stepladder out climbed up there and put a little bit of extra protection underneath the tarp there on that corner I don't need my tarps ripping I still got a long ways to go I still got just under 3,000 kilometers to go to my destination I don't need my tarps ripping Spench of tarps Depending on the tarp, you know, one tarp can be $900. I think that's Canadian though, so what, like $700 American? Does that sound right? Tighten them 
down a little bit so they're flapping around a little less because it's when they're loose and they flap that's when they rip the easiest on the corners as long as the tarp is tight much less chance of it ripping as long as you don't got any sharp edges poking on it curtain side would be really nice for tarp loads but then you're limited to the uh, width and length of freight you can haul right I wouldn't mind pulling a curtain side sort of like a van trailer except that the walls and the roof roll away to reveal a flatbed and then you just roll the walls it's like a curtain you just roll it back over yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory you guys know what I mean right so we're about to go through Minneapolis I believe this is where they had that whole debate recently in the news right Minneapolis is Minnesota they, they seem to be getting in the in the news in the past couple of years for the most odd reasons and That's the closest big city to where I live, right? So I sort of feel a little bit at home there I know it's not exactly my home a different country. I get it, but it's really close to where I live right and the fact that they're having these weird Weird debates going on and it's like it's like the government wanted to ban the Pledge of Allegiance to the American flag, right? Now, the American city government didn't want to say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of America. Huh? I don't know. What do you guys think about that whole debate? I don't, know, I don't want to get too political in my video here for you, but obviously I think that's a little ridiculous. They're the government. If they're not going to pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States and to the country itself, who are they pledging allegiance to, right? Here's, that's who you work for. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know, they had their reasons, which I thought were just weird. Didn't make any sense. But, uh, <laughs> what do you guys think of that whole thing? I'm pretty sure my audience is the type of people that would get very angry if they would cancel the pledge, I would think, right? Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know all of you. I don't know. Weird. Minnesota. What you doing? What you doing? The city. I get it. It's the city. It's not the surrounding areas. It's the same thing in Manitoba. Our city thinks and behaves very differently than all the rural communities do for the most part for the most part seems like the bigger the city the more loony they are right no offense to any of you living in a big city i know you're not one of those people i mean it's not like everybody in a big city is crazy it's just that seems to be where they congregate wouldn't you agree i don't know if you come to canada take a look at toronto or vancouver Strangest things, strangest things. But anyway, we're gonna be going through that city anyway, Minneapolis, St. Paul. And they're doing a lot of construction here on the on the roadways. Then again, who isn't? Who isn't, right? What am I what am I talking about? It's, it's, it's construction season. Of course they're doing work on the on the roads. See they got us on this lane here, which I think is a temporary lane, and then they're redoing that line over there, which I think is the permanent line. Right? See, that's the way to do it right, though. See, Manitoba, take notes. When you want to redo a highway, you rip it right down to the foundations and start over. That's going to be one nice highway. Look at that. New bridge and everything. America. Even though the costs of these freeways must be just exponential, just enormous, eh? That's a lot of money. And have you seen the amount of layers they put into these these freeways like the foundations they build for it like look at a when they redo a road let's say highway 75 in manitoba or any road in canada anyone doesn't matter when they're redoing it take a look at how the crews do the foundation if they even dig down that far to redo it right if they do look at how they do the foundations how many layers they put what they put down on it and then come down to the u.s and pay attention to how they redo their highways and how deep they dig how many layers of foundation, how thick the layers of foundation. It's just huge. It's like four feet down. Manitoba, we're like, yeah, we put it about six inches. That'll do, right? Oh, yeah. That should last us at least till spring. You guys think I'm just making fun of my own province? No, no. Ask anyone from Manitoba. It's true. It's true. <laughs> but, you know, the biggest argument of the people who are the apologists for, uh, this cheap, cheap 
roadways. You know, they always say, well, Manitoba doesn't have that many people, but they got a lot of, you know, a lot of land. And to that, I say, touche. I just realized something. I left my hat on my trailer. You think it's still there? Shoot! I lost my hat. That was a gift. Oh man. That was a good Z71 hat too. Shoot, that was my work hat. I like that hat. I'm gonna pull over here and see if it's still there. Why did I, t oh yeah, I took it off so I could climb under the tarp without it falling off. I lost my hat. It makes me sad. All right, we're gonna pull off here and see if it, for some magical reason, maybe it got hooked on one of the bungees or something and it's still back there. 99% sure I just lost a good hat. Nope, she gone. She gone, I had it right here. Shoot. Wait a second. Wait a second, what's that over there? What's that over there? <laughs> As if it stayed on the trailer this whole time right here. <laughs> nice. Oh, I'm a happy man. Can't believe it didn't fly off. It wasn't tied down or anything. It was just sitting on the deck of the trailer, just right in the right spot. Actually, I, I had it, I'd put it right where I showed you at first, and I guess the wind kind of shook it over to the other side, and it was right in a perfect spot, right where the wind sort of kept it there and it didn't fly. What a miracle. See, miracles do happen. Oh, man. That was an emergency. How about that, eh, Diesel? I shall now refer to this hat as the miracle hat. That's a miracle it didn't fly away. We drove at least, what, 15, 20, no, 15 minutes down the road? That's my miracle hat. Chevy. Like a rock. We got a lot of weekend traffic on the other side of Minneapolis as well. You want to play the game? Who's watching where they're going? Let's see. Not bad. Texting and driving. How about this guy, Mr. Acura? Oh, he's good. So far, only one texter and driver. Okay, let's see what this guy's doing up here with a broken bumper. Are you watching where you're going? Yep. Good for you. Good for you. We're on a good ratio here right now. How about you, Mr. Ford? Or Miss Ford? Two hands on the wheel. Wow, I'm proud of you, Minnesota. Watching where he's going. How about this guy here? Watching where he's going. Wow, Minnesota, you are impressing me. Look at all you safe drivers. BMW. Watching where you're going. Wow. I'm not gonna get up beside this Nissan here to check. Oh, maybe I will, maybe I will. How about you, Nissan, you watching where you're going? Well, you're petting your puppy in your passenger seat, but you're still watching where you're going, I'll let you go. Very nice, bunch of safe drivers. How about you, Mr. Dodge? Watching where you're going? Watching where you're, two hands on the wheel too, wow. Everybody's watching where they're going today, what's going on? Yeah, you too. How about you, Subaru? Two hands on the wheel still. Wow! I've only seen one person texting and driving in this traffic jam so far. Wow! It's usually like two out of three people are like buried in their phones on Facebook or Instagram or doing their makeup or uh, doing their hair. But he's watching where they're going today. I'm proud of you people. All right, let's keep going and catching up some more people here. All right, starting at the Chevy here, the red Chevy. Red Chevy, watching where you're going. Wow, you little Ford hatchback. Watch where you're going. Hey, let me catch up to you. Hey, I need to see inside. <laughs> I'm creepy. <laughs> watching where you're going too. 
Wow. I'm starting to regain my faith in humanity here. How about you, BMW, Mr. Blacked Out BMW? Hey, come back here. Hey. Hey, come back here. I don't look at you. I'll catch you. I'm going to catch you. All these drivers paying attention, not on their phones. Wow. Your local police department would be so happy and proud. 1.8 kilometers. Keep left on I-94. Huh. What's funny is that guy merging over there was on his phone. <laughs> the one guy that should be paying attention more than anyone else. He's texting. A little further down the line, we're going a little faster. How about you? You watching where you're going? Watching where you're going. Two hands on the wheel. Very nice. Hey, I just hit one million kilometers on this truck. One million. Fun fact for you. Now on with our game. Here comes a Dodge up beside us. Oh, this is the same Dodge as before. Still watching where you're going. Good lad. Why are we slowing down? Why is this truck going so slow? How about you? You watching? Nope, you are on your phone. Okay. How about you? You watching where you're going? Yep, watching where you're going. Okay, so so far only three people on their phones. In traffic. Watching where you're going? How about you? Two hands on the wheel. Very nice. Oh, this guy's a douchebag. In the pickup right here, he's been cutting people off. How did he get behind me? Oh, he's waving his arms around and getting mad at people tailgating them. I guess he pulled off the road and got behind me and now he's back passing everybody. He's the douchebag of the day. All right, on with our game. Few more cars. Big SUV. You're watching where you're going, but you got a Chihuahua on your lap. That's okay. Watching where you're going. All right, got a Jeep coming up beside us. Watching two hands on the wheel. Good for you, good for you. Yeah, that pickup truck, I wish I could follow him a little closer, but man, I don't want to get too close to him. Comes a VW. Feet on the dash, oh, that was the passenger's feet, okay. All right, watching where you're going. Well, how are you? On your phone, on Facebook, it looked like. How about this guy? Commercial driver coming up beside me. How about you? Watching where you're going. The majority of people today are watching where they're going. Very good, very good. One more, one more, one more. This car here. Watching two hands on the wheel. Good for you people. And we're gonna make it to the Canadian border with 32 minutes. By the time I get there, probably with 30 minutes left on my clock. As soon as I cross over to Canada, I'll have an extra two hours, so we'll have two and a half hours. And I just need one more hour to get to our yard. And then we're gonna go home. Man, is there bugs out tonight. Man, it's bug season. It's My clean arrived. truck. Arrive at I-29 North and I-29 North. <laughs> that means arrive at the Canadian border. All those lights up ahead, that's the Canadian border. I'll see you on the other side. Hey, y'all. My name's Jake. And you're watching Trucker Josh and Diesel on TJV. Come on.